today, you're going to learn about one key concept of Tailwind CSS that I think is very important to understand. Now, this is video number two of my Tailwind series. So if you're completely new to Tailwind, I would check out my first video where I cover what Tailwind is and just an overview of how it works. But in this video, we're going to cover how we Tailwind is a utility first CSS framework. Now I am within my website here that I created for this course. You can access this by going to my GitHub that is linked below, and then you can clone that repo and run npm run dev. And on localhost 3000, you should be able to see this website here. And I am on my utility first page here. And that is the core concept. Tailwind is a utility first CSS framework. So traditionally in CSS, you would need to add a class to your HTML. Then you would need to use CSS selectors to select that class or select that HTML, and you wouldn't necessarily need to add a class, but you'd use your selectors to select that element, and then you would write your different properties and values within your CSS file to style that element. In Tailwind, things are a bit different in which you style elements by providing pre-existing classes to your HTML, or if you're using React, which this project that I've created here is in Next.js, so it does use React, but nothing in this series is necessarily React or Next.js specific. And then these utility classes will automatically apply styles that Tailwind has already pre-written for you. So Tailwind has pre-written all these different classes and styles within CSS files that when you add these classes, it's CSS files will automatically target those elements and give them these styles. Now, you don't need to worry about performance here because Tailwind doesn't include all possible CSS that it has written within its framework. It removes all that CSS and it will only ship the CSS that you actually use. So it is typically pretty performant and doesn't actually ship much CSS to the browser. I think typically under like 10 kilobytes of CSS. So let's actually dive into my code editor here. I'm just within VS Code, and this is within my GitHub project here. And let's style one of these paragraphs. So we're on my utility first page here. And the only thing that you'll see different between this React code and just like normal HTML is that I need to use class name instead of class. And that's because this is technically JSX, which is JavaScript and JavaScript has a class keyword, so I can't use the class keyword within JSX. So to get around that, React uses the class name keyword, but this would be the same thing effectively as having HTML and setting a class to it. So let's actually style this paragraph right here using Tailwind. So I already have Tailwind installed and set up within this Next.js project. But to style this paragraph, what you can do is just add different class names to this paragraph. So I'm going to do class name, and then I can add various class names here. So what do I want to do? Well, let's, let's just increase the font size, or maybe let's make it italic first. So to learn how to do this, you can go to the tailwindcss.com forward slash docs website. And on the left side, you'll be able to see all the different Tailwind classes that you can add to your HTML to style your elements. So here we're within the typography section and we are on font style. And all we need to do is set the class of italic. And that is going to set the CSS properties of font style is italic. So if I go back to VS code and I just put italic for my class, and then I come back to my application, you see my second paragraph here is now font style of italic. And it is that easy to style your elements within Tailwind. So let's do font size. And we can do, let's add more of a font size. If we wanted to do font size is 1.875 rems, we can do text hyphen 3XL as a class name. So I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to add text hyphen 3XL. And if we come look at my page, you see that gives it a huge text here. So we can adjust our styles by just adding these classes. And let's add one more here just to make sure everything's making sense. Let's add a text color. Let's do something that pops out a bit, maybe like this orange color here, text orange 500 to add color of RGB 
249-115-22. So just so we're clear here, within the Tailwind docs, you can easily find the different like CSS properties that you want to apply. So like in my head, if I want to add a color to an item, I'm going to come to Tailwind, I'm going to find text color, and I'm going to see, okay, I want to add the color with like this RGB. Well, then I just need to add this class here. Or if you wanted to make like a container as Flexbox, you go to the Flexbox and Grid section. If I want to set the Flex property, then I want to set, say, Flex 110%, then I can use this class right here. Or if I want to set different display properties, like set display block for something, well, this CSS property will correspond to this Tailwind class. So for my font color, what I need to do is I need to add text hyphen orange 500 to add color of some RGB that is going to be orange here. And then if I come back, we see that this is now indeed orange. So within Tailwind, you can add all these different classes that will automatically style them. These are just utility classes that Tailwind has already created for you. And you can just consult the Tailwind docs to determine what class name corresponds to the CSS that you want to add to your different elements. Now, since this looks so disgusting, I'm going to actually remove all this. Well, hopefully that gives you a good idea of how these utility classes work. And up at the top here, you can see that I'm making my main element here a flexbox element that it's going to have the 100 VH, which is min height is the entire screen, or it's going to set the min height to 100 VH. It's going to place the items in the center. It's going to justify them between. It's going to make it a column flex direction here. So it's very similar to adding different CSS properties, but you're just adding them as class names here. Now, what are the benefits of doing things this way? Well, you no longer need to worry about naming your classes, nor do you need to worry about adding a class that does something another developer has already implemented. So you don't have to like come up with these arbitrary classes anymore for your CSS, nor do you have to worry about like adding a certain utility class in your CSS when maybe another developer already added that same utility class in another CSS file and you just don't really know that they've already done this. You don't have to worry about that with this implementation. Also, everything is reusable. So I can just add all these different classes to all these different paragraphs or in other components and everything is reusable out of the box. And you're not just adding more and more styles every time you want to style something else. All you do is add the pre-written classes for those certain CSS properties. You're not just having this ever-growing CSS style sheet that you have to maintain. And this approach also prevents your CSS from being global because you're scoping your CSS to just the HTML elements that we're using here. Like you saw when I styled this P element here, I wasn't selecting all the P elements in my application. I was only adding those classes to this paragraph here. So it prevents these kind of global collisions within your CSS. Now, you might kind of be thinking here, isn't this just like using inline styles? Well, I mean, it kind of is, but there are some specific benefits to styling things with Tailwind in this way, rather than just using inline styles. With inline styles, all of your styles are basically just magic numbers. So within an inline style, what I'm talking about is like for this paragraph, if I want to do a style is equal to, and then I would do font size of 30 pixels. I come back and you see it sets a font size of 30 pixels here. Well, like this, it's just a hard coded string here, just like a magic number. And this can make it really difficult to have like consistent styles across our application. But when using Tailwind, all of our styles are coming from a predefined design system, which will make it a lot easier to have a consistent kind of look and feel throughout our application because we're not just using all these different hard-coded magic numbers with inline styles. Also, like with inline styles, it can make it really difficult to do things like responsive design, as well as styling different states, like hover and active states or other states like that, to where inline styles, like if I wanted to do responsive design here, it's like, I mean, 
I would have to do something like, okay, I would have to use JavaScript within React. And I would have to be like, okay, is my window dot width less than 500 question mark? Okay, make the font size this font size, else make it this font size. Or you'd have to do different kind of things like that within your inline styles. But within Tailwind, it makes it much easier to implement responsive design, which I'm going to cover in depth in a future video. But basically, you just will prefix your classes with when you want your style to show. So you would be like MD, and then you would do colon, and then like your class name. So when it hits like this medium big breakpoint, it's going to apply this style. And it's going to be a very similar thing when styling different states like hover and active. It would be like hover colon flex. So when they're hovering it, make this display flex. That doesn't make a ton of sense to do with this example, but that is how Tailwind effectively handles their different hover states and responsive design. You will add hover, colon, and then your class name, or MD, colon, your class name. So apply these styles when it hits this medium breakpoint, which is much easier than just using inline styles. So I do think Tailwind has those benefits over inline styles, but we will cover handling different states and responsive design as well as customization in future videos here. So hopefully you got a good understanding of this utility first core concept of Tailwind, but stay tuned for these future videos to dive in a little bit more depth to gain a full understanding of how Tailwind works, the benefits of it, and how to use it in your application. So thanks for tuning in. I will see you in that next one.